So uh, basically all the data is in for the month of January when it comes to inflation. Whether you look at CPI, PCE, they seem to, at least in my view, have confirmed uh, the same pieces of information, which was the decline that we saw in the latter half of 2022 hit a bit of a trend reversal in the month of January. And my question for you is, was this a fluke? Was it a blip on the radar? Or are we entering into a different trend than I think what markets at least had been anticipating and, and expecting for the for it to continue uh, into 2023? Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a fluke. Uh, I mean, I think some of the reversal that we saw in Q4, which showed that, you know, there was a little bit less disinflation than we had previously thought, some of that is just kind of due to some technical reasons, um, you know, revisions that the BLS does every year yep. that basically just mostly, you know, shift the strength around a little bit. For January itself, I mean, you know, some of the, the increase we saw was really related to um, stronger services inflation. Yes. And that's, that doesn't seem like much of a fluke because that's sort of, you know, that's something that's been with us really for the last six, seven months. Um, on top of that, we've got some... Uh, you know, some unfortunately, some inflation coming back from used car prices again that actually hasn't even really materialized quite just yet, but that's, you can see that's starting to bubble up too. So I wouldn't necessarily just chalk it all up to, to a one-off just yet. I think there's there's some more um, underlying inflation um, in the economy right now. Um, you know, and January was just sort of showing us that's a little bit more the same when it comes to services sector inflation. Amir, I've seen a little bit of the blame go to uh, weather and seasonal adjustments that they make to the data. Can you speak to that at all? I know that January was a, uh, I don't know, less bad weather month than typical. Does that actually play a role here, or is that just kind of an excuse for the bad data? Yeah, I'm I'm not a huge fan of the, the weather excuse. Um, I will say this much. Um, the San Francisco Federal Reserve um, puts out a an estimate. Um every month of how much the weather might have impacted the jobs data, for example. Um, their number was that, you know, the, the, the warmer weather, and it was the fifth warmest January I think we've had on record, um, according to, to the government, um, that it may have boosted the payrolls number by about 130,000. Now, that said, let's just say even if you took that at face value, you're still talking about a 400,000 print on jobs, right? So that's, that's still very robust no matter what. I don't think it really played as much of a role on the inflation data at all. The bigger issue for the inflation numbers is, you know, what uh, essentially you have start of the year price increases that typically that that occurs every January. Okay. And that's that is a seasonal thing. We do try to adjust for that. The problem is we can never quite capture the amount of seasonality that's occurring. And so you end up having price increases and things like, you know, apparel, uh, furniture prices and Mm -hmm. so on. Um, So that continued this year. I mean, apparel prices were up almost a full percentage point in January alone. And a lot of that reflects that sort of turn of the year price increase that we normally tend to get. So to me, that's a bit more, you know, underlying or, or, or real move, you, if you will, um, you know, versus anything that has to do with the weather. Can you help us understand the divergence between the data that we seem to get, you know, on a monthly basis from places like apartment list uh, versus what the CPI is showing us on on shelter costs, because for the last six months we have been averaging inflation and in shelter of over zero point six percent monthly. January came in again at zero point seven percent. Seems very contradictory to you know the data that we continue to get around new leases. Uh, what what is the difference here? What's the divergence? So, yeah, there's there's a couple of major differences. The the biggest one, and and you know hands down the reason why you're seeing point six point seven in the CPI and uh, you know, zero or even somewhat negative growth in some of these private market measure le- like apartment lists is that the apartment list data is capturing new leases only. So it is only for new renters who are moving in signing a brand new lease and it's comparing them to what a new renter might have signed, you know, the prior month. The CPI number includes the entire rental market. So it's people who are renewing, people who are, you know, signing new leases. It's also just the data sort of captured at, at slightly longer intervals. So mm. it's not, uh, even though it is a month-to-month number, um, certain, you know, uh, it really is coming back to each apartment unit six months later to see what their their lease looks like. Um, so you've got kind of a bit of a smoothing out, if you will, in the CPI number. So you have a natural lag in the data and the CPI, given the way they're capturing this this figure. So usually what we'll say is that, you know, it tends to lag all of these private market measures by roughly about a year. So given that we saw apartment list and, you know, core logic and all these other metrics start to slow down around, you know, spring or early part of the summer of 2022, 
the idea is we should start to see them come down in um, the summer or spring of um, of uh, 2023. So there's probably a few more months left here where we'll see positive increases in the CPI data. Um, and, you know, again, around this 0.6, 0.7 type number, and then it should start to moderate um, a little bit as we head into uh, the summer run. Omer, big picture here. I, I think there's a lot of people trying to figure out, hey, the last half of 2022 – it was disinflationary. That was the story. January reversed that trend. Which direction are we going? Are, are we now at this point where, hey, services inflation is going to be taking off and you know the, the consumer that we thought maybe was pulling back has stopped? Or are you finding areas that you would say, no, this is going to continue so long as things like oil prices uh, don't, don't go off, off the charts again? Yes, I, I would put it this way. I, I don't think it's that service inflation is about to take off. I think it just never really slowed down that much to begin with. Um, it's In fact, if you look at kind of core services inflation and, you know, uh, whatever measure you want to look at, let's say the CPI, it really just hasn't come off too dramatically over the last six months. It's kind of, it got up to a certain level. It's kind of flatlined around that level, and we just really haven't seen. The easing has been much, much more gradual, I think, than, than what we would have expected Um at this stage, I think the concerning thing over the, honestly, the next three, four months is going to be that, um, you know, used car price inflation looks like it's, it's going to move higher again over the next several months. So we've got a little bit of a double whammy coming here over the next few months. But I think ultimately, when you get into the back half of the year, we're still talking about the dominant factor in the CPI. Forty percent of core inflation is, you know, is housing. Um, and those, those rent numbers will start to, to cool off in the back half of the year. So. I think that disinflation kick is coming. It's just it's going to take a little bit longer for us to get there than I think we you know we might have thought before we got the January data where it looked like things were already um, improving quite dramatically. It just looks like it's going to stretch out for a bit longer than we thought. Omer Sharif uh, from Inflation Insights joining us to talk about the January inflation picture, what we might be looking at ahead. Thank you, Amir. Appreciate it as always.